we are going to go ahead and jump right in. So for everyone who's on the line so far, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar on driving revenue and reducing costs with self-service technology. Let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. And then let's also take a look at uh, the poll results. So it looks like we've got a nice mix with us on the call today, mostly folks who are interested in learning more about making a decision on self-service tech, uh, but a handful who are actively considering adding kiosks and then some who already utilize them today. So hopefully we'll have some great content in here for everybody who's on the line. And to give you a sense of who's talking to you right now, my name is Sydney Kita, and I'm the Senior Marketing Communications Manager at Rebel Systems. And I'm joined by someone who is a far deeper expert in the world of point of sale. Dan Barlow is one of our enterprise sales engineers, and so he will be diving into a demo of some of our self-service and kiosk solutions. And we've got some great content in store. Um, quick housekeeping note. Please feel free to submit uh, questions throughout the webinar via the Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen. We will hold questions and answers until the end of the webinar, but you're welcome to submit them as they come. And so with that, let's dive into the content. And so um, certainly, you know, one thing we want to consider is why self-service tech is such a big topic right now. And an obvious one is upsell opportunities. So for everyone who has been in the hospitality industry, probably at any level of work, you know that it's not a given that every single transaction where a human is involved is going to be one where they remember to include upsell opportunities before closing things out with the payment screen. So when you've got self-service, you've actually got the ability to make sure that you have an automated and uh, universal approach to those upsell opportunities and potentially inching that final price point a little bit higher before your consumers check out. The other thing is that your guests are in the driver's seat and can fully customize their own uh, guest experience when they are making the choices in their ordering. So they can order at the speed and in the order that they like. There's no interrupting to say, oh, before you move on, we need to talk about XYZ modifiers. It's a beautiful, fluid experience that they get to control, and I think it's pretty difficult to be upset with your guest experience when you're the guest and the service provider. And then, of course, we've all seen labor challenge uh, headlines. Those seem to be pretty constant lately, and it's not really new to the restaurant space in particular, uh, but a kiosk is a great way for you to augment and offset some of those challenges where you can then apply your staff to more strategic positions throughout your store. Uh, health standards are another thing that are more linked to COVID these days, where you're limiting the number of touch points between people with a kiosk interaction. So you can just have the hand sanitizer station and a self-driven experience and help reduce some of the guest concerns and friction about health. And then it's just a convenient option. You know, it's something that if done well, you can set it up and sort of let that piece of your business handle itself, uh, again, with the customers driving everything. So it is a really nice option, and it's a huge reason that it's such a popular topic right now. We'll move on to the next slide. So, of course, there are some long-term perceptions of why you might not want to go the self-service and kiosk route. And so one, of course, is concern about the guests themselves and that your customers won't understand that it's an option, won't totally get how to use it, um, you know, might miss it in your store. So um, you know, as we get along to Dan's part of the presentation, we'll focus on some easy ways that you can overcome that. Um, another concern is that it might be really costly or difficult to implement a kiosk in your store locations. So, you know, that's something that, again, Revel's got a lot of different options. Scale a big, scalability is a big factor for us. So we'll talk through just um, the fact that it doesn't actually have to be this huge investment. And uh, same thing goes for your in-store footprint. So if you're concerned about something big or bulky or cumbersome to set up, um, something that in disrupts your traffic flow. Again, there's a lot of ways to come at self-service and kiosks. So we'll look at some ways that that doesn't necessarily have to be a barrier. 
And so for a quick su success story before we jump into the live demo, uh, we actually have a Revel client who fully integrated self-service solutions via kiosks, and they actually shifted to a waitstaff free business model, and it served them really, really well. So the pandemic definitely accelerated this for the customer in question, and um, actually 80% of their business is now driven by kiosks and third-party online orders today, which is huge for their revenue and the business that they do day to day. And even in stores where they did a hybrid model for a time, um, they ended up finding that there was so much benefit with self-service ordering that they have largely done away with the cashier running the POS altogether. And now that we've got some context, let's skip on over to Dan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, had to grab the right mouse there. So uh, thanks for the handoff, Sydney. Um, I'll go ahead, I'll start sharing my screen and we'll just talk a little bit about what the self-service kiosks look like. So uh, first things first, here is the Revel uh, kiosk. Our kiosks are running on an iPad, so we can use any form of iPad. Typically, I suggest uh, the largest iPad, the iPad Pro. It's got the brightest screen, the most brilliant colors, and it really draws in the eyes of the customer. And that's one of those things that you're going to need to consider. You know, not only what is the technology workflow of adding kiosks to your restaurant, but what is the uh, customer flow, right? Uh, it's one thing to get your customers to use a kiosk when they're there, but they also need to know that they can use a kiosk. So if you have it way off to the side or behind them when they actually walk in, like I've seen in, in some concepts, that's, that's not always going to be the best way to go about it. Uh, so with Revels Kiosk, being iPad-based, it can be on a counter, it can be on its own stand, it could be at the counter that you're already doing ordering from, uh, just you know, facing the customer or the guest. Uh, but, you know, the options are really up to you. There's the popular chains where you walk in and the first thing you see is a sign that directs you to the kiosks and, and then you kind of have to walk around that to get to the ordering side. Uh, some uh, customers that want to do all kiosks, you know, it, it's going to be very clear. You go up to one counter, that's the only counter to order from. Um, I think of my days working at Jason's Deli where 15 years ago where people wanted to go and they wanted to order just the salad bar. Maybe you've got something like that where it's something you don't really need a lot of customer interaction with. They, they want their salad bar and they want their iced tea and that's what they're coming for 90% of the time. Maybe you've got a limited kiosk over there just to cater to those items. I know that we had some questions about that. And can you have a reduced menu set for that? And and focus on just a few things and that, absolutely. Or maybe you wanted a kiosk for reordering or any of those kinds of pieces, but after the fact uh, where, you know, customers are already sat in line, but if I want to get a milkshake added to my, you know, meal, you know, is there a quicker way I could go about do that, about doing that? So I'll go ahead, I'll start clicking through. Um, this is running on an iPad. I've got a mouse just so that you can see where I'm clicking. But for the customer, they walk up to the iPad, they're going to see your logo, your branding, you get to choose what the background image is going to be. You get to choose, does it say welcome, touch screen to begin, or does it say order here? Or do you have more brand, on target branding kind of verbiage that you want to use yourself? Uh, that is customizable to you. So we've got it very configurable so that you can choose the images the color schemes, the verbiage, what the ultimate flow is, and, and then help you guide through that. So I'll click welcome, order here. And then I've got the question, is this for here or is it to go? So I've got take out, eat in. I'll do an eat in order here. And then you can see it's going to bring us to a landing page where it's going to guide the customer through the, the funnel, burgers, chicken sandwich, sticks and wings. If you've got product images that are really sharp, this is a really great way to highlight them. If you don't have the best product images, we can also do this without that, where it's going to go to uh, like a white tile that, that's going to have that with you know, your background already on there. So whatever works best for you. Some food looks awesome in pictures, some food, not so much. When I'm looking at this picture of wings right now, 
really big in front of me? Eh, eh. So it's up to you. You can also see that we're using, you know, design elements that's very familiar to uh, a customer. You know, they don't need to come up and learn how to use it. It's just kind of natural. So to go back, they go up to the top left and they can go back and they can choose their dining option. In the top right, this is their login and this is their cart. So this is just like any web page that they're using. And in fact, I'll go ahead, I'll log in and it will ask me to log in with loyalty. So I can actually put my phone number in here. Not only does this use Revel's loyalty, but we actually have integration with Punch for loyalty on our kiosk as well. So you can see, here's my account, here's my visit points, here's my purchase points. Now I'm gonna earn points on this visit today, and then I can continue through the process. When I click on burgers, you can see, it's gonna bring me right up to this burger page. And I've got some of my highest ticket items on here right up front. I got my burger, fries, and drink combo. I got my large burger, my mushroom Swiss burger, my XXL burger. You know, my lower price burgers, I, I put down below the fold. Uh, but what's important here is that you've got customer friendly verbiage. You know, if you've got data in your point of sale today where it's, you know, your burgers B, G, F, R, and drink, you know, uh, and you've got abbreviations that aren't human friendly, now that's something that you're going to need to consider when you're, you know, adding a kiosk is, do I have images that look good for my products? Do I have marketing copy for the descriptions? Are the buttons going to make sense? You know, a burger, fries, and a drink combo, maybe I don't need the kitchen to see it spelled out that way. So we've got different print names that can happen once it hits a, the kitchen printer or the kitchen display system, but it's really important to make sure it's, it's consumer friendly and they don't know your acronyms. They don't know any of your abbreviations. Make sure it, it's easily read. So we'll go ahead and, and hit that combo. I'm susceptible to, to getting a combo. So when I go on here, I got the burger choice. And you can see I, I had the classic burger as a picture on there, but I can actually have multiple burgers that they would have the option for. And in the different burgers, I can actually charge different amounts. So the classic burger is that base combo price. And that large burger, it's gonna have an, an additional upcharge. When I add that burger, I can still see the description. I've got the ability to add a note. So if I have allergies or if I want it cooked rare or, or extra well done, you know, those are notes that I could have. But you know, in an ideal situation, you're actually gonna have most of those kinds of things already set up as modifiers so that the customer knows what the options are available to them. And then they're not asking for freebies in that note section. You know, very common in online ordering and, and self-service is, you know, once you get it to the kitchen, they, you know, they go through and you see what they've, they've tried to add and they've tried to order, and they're asking for freebies. You know, so good to have those modifiers on here. You can have modifiers that are included in the price and the item, or you can have modifiers that are upcharges. So you can see here, I've got add-ons, specialty add-ons, bacon, egg, onion rings. Let's add an egg to the burger. I can actually choose how many eggs I want to add. So if I want to add more, I can. You know, this really gives the guest the flexibility to add all the things that they want and also gives them the comfort to explore and to learn the menu themselves. You know, our dining hall at, at Revel, uh, the corporate dining hall in the, the building downstairs, for years, you know, I ate there and I didn't know that I could actually go and get a customized burger and then have different patties and have beyond meat and options. And they're using Rebel Kiosk and I go and it, I add four or five dollars to the, to the order each time. Similar experience if I'm ordering Chick-fil-A, if I'm ordering in the drive through window where I'm, I'm talk, talking to someone through a speaker box, you know, I'm gonna get a number one. But if I'm ordering it on the app, doing any sort of self-service things, I'm gonna get the number one, I'm gonna add cheese, I'm gonna customize the different options on there. I'm gonna make sure I get the sauces I want. And it, it gives me the, the ability to flex the menu items. You know, maybe a chicken sandwich isn't the most exciting thing every day, but if I can customize it with different sauces, I can make it what I really want. And that can drive repeat customers. You can see I'm timing out here. I'll say, yes, I'm still here. I'm still deciding what to add. We'll add some guacamole. And it's also really important to make sure that you're capturing all the things like do you have all the sauces someone could want? 
not just the sauces that come with your burrito, but maybe you've got a really great sauce that someone would add, add every so often, make sure you've got those on there. It gives the customers the flexibility that they want so, so that they can order it how they want. You can upcharge them for those items uh, and, and it makes it easy. My wife and I used to go to this burrito place all the time. Now that it's you know COVID and pandemic and we're not so close, we, we try to order ahead, but they don't have the sauce we want on their online ordering and we stopped we stopped going there. We just kind of fell out of the habit. So I've added a couple items. You can see I've got the square checkbox. Those are optional things. I had something where this bun choice, this was circular. So I'm actually requiring the customer to give me a bun choice. And this is actually an added opportunity to have an upsell. So do I want them to get the gluten-free bun for $1.50 more or no bun or, or the different options? So I'll go ahead and hit choose from here. Then you can see I still have to select what patty I'm going to come, have it come on. So we'll do that up impossible patty. I didn't even know that it was an option, but there's a dollar seventy more added to that order. I hit choose. And now I can continue on and I can add the fries of my choice. So I'll just add sweet potato fries seasoned with salt. And then I'll add a, a drink, large soda, choose that. And I've added it to the order. And you can see with all these add-ons that I had on there, I brought that $12.99 combo up to $20.24 after tax. Uh, tax isn't that high. So I'm actually driving incremental revenue and it doesn't take a lot to really have a big impact. An extra modifier here or there over you know, hundreds or thousands of orders really adds up. One other thing I can do is if someone wasn't attracted to that burger fries and a drink combo, but they wanted to order the way their brain works is they want that entree first and then they want to select the sides. Now I can, I can select that mushroom Swiss burger. We'll add shredded cheddar, you know, wheat bun. I'll add that to the cart. And now I've got it, bam, right here, make it a combo. Do I want to add side? Do I want to add a drink? And then it'll give me the option for 1385, I can make it a combo that's going to have a side and a drink. So it's very easy to go in and, and make things a combo. You can see on that combo, it doesn't have to just be medium soda. They can have that vanilla shake or the chocolate shake or the, the large soda. So giving them the options, maybe they didn't know they could do these substitutions that can also drive more revenue. I'll do thick fries this time. Well done, choose and add that to the order. So really easy to use. Uh, it's just important that you're making it easy to use. So when I go to the cart, I can see my order. I can see my combo. I can still go back and I can edit it. I can still do any of the changes. I can add quantity. So if you're like my wife and I, and we order the same thing all the time, even though we try not to be boring, uh, we end up doing it. We are inherently boring people. We've moved up to the suburbs, so it happens. Uh, so I go check out, and it's going to ask me for the con for my name. So I'll say, my name is Dan, and then how am I going to pay? And I can pay here at the register. I can pay with cash uh, in that situation. Maybe your goal here is to remove cash from the situation. Maybe your goal here is to remove the people. So that's an option that doesn't have to be on there, but it still can be if, if that's something that you want. And in this situation, they could print out a receipt with a barcode. And when I take that barcode up to the terminal, all they have to do is scan that barcode. And it recalls the order and then they can go ahead and make any payments. Maybe that's a situation where you want to pay at the register because you want to do ID verification, or maybe you want to sell them alcohol or, or something like that, where you're doing even more upsell opportunities or Maybe they generate the order on the kiosk and then they're getting queued up for a table. Lots of different options out there. I'm talking to more and more brands, large and small, that are trying to get out of just being table service or just being quick service. You know, They're a quick service restaurant and their food's better than most table service restaurants as you know, we can see that trend going in the chain size. So maybe they wanna offer a higher level of service uh, but they still want to keep it a little bit quick service and keep their costs down. You know, this could be an option there or you know, table service customers who are trying to become quick service because the, their perceived labor issues or, the, or their real labor issues. Uh, so all these are possible. 
I'll go ahead, I'll pay with a gift card so we can end the transaction. And here we go. Would you like to leave a tip? And you can still prompt for getting tips for your staff. And it doesn't have to be 15, 20, 25%. You can set what you want these ranges to be. Maybe you might need to evaluate what is the level of service we're giving them after they order from the kiosk? What should a customer feel comfortable paying with? And then we can also set minimum thresholds. So if I went up and got a drink and it was you know 20% on a $2.79 drink, you know, 50 cent tip doesn't really feel great for me and as a consumer side to feel like I'm actually tipping. So you can actually set the, the minimum to be like a one, 150, $2 so that they can always you know, contribute a tip that feels meaningful. So we'll do uh, 20%, uh, you know, not generous enough for 25%, I guess, today. Um, and then I can enter, in this case, I'll enter a gift card manually, but uh, all the payments are actually going to be on the attached payment device, just like the normal Revel point of sale. So it's using the same stands, it's using the same iPads and the same payment devices. So it's, it's actually very easy to try it maybe with an existing terminal that you have moving to kiosks or to add an additional terminal, try to see if, it, if you wanna do it as a kiosk. And if not, you still have the normal hardware that you're already using with Revel. So you're really not losing anything with this opportunity. Gift cards accepted. My name is Dan. It can print off my receipt. I can also ask for it to email me a receipt if we want. And then the transaction is done. Julie or Sydney, uh, anything you thought I uh, forgot there outside of your name? <laughs> uh, no worries. Uh, Julie is my, my very capable right hand. So uh, no, I think that was thorough. And we do have some questions coming in. So sure. I think we've got one more point we wanted to address with our slides before opening it up for Q&A. So let's, let's do that. So um, for online ordering, Dan, do you just want to share how this is also an option uh, that's available for self-service for folks who maybe aren't interested in taking the full kiosk plunge? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm talking to some brands and some of the phrases I'm hearing is the kiosk is in your pocket. And, uh, you know, I searched around and it turns out they're talking about my phone. Uh, so what, what you can actually do is you can have a very similar experience with a guided online ordering experience, having the modifiers, having the combos up front. It's actually the same setup and configuration as a kiosk. So once you set that up for the kiosk or for online ordering, it really only takes about a minute uh, more to do it for the other because we're just actually hitting checkboxes in our management console. Uh, so it's very easy to set up. And actually, let me just show that real quick because that's one of the things that we had on there is it's the perception that it's difficult to set th things up on here. Once you've got the products and the images already in here, all you have to do is set up a custom menu for your kiosk. You say it's an application type of kiosk, it's for kiosk. Here are the date and time ranges. So you can actually have different pricing and different times and different times that it's available. Maybe you want kiosks only for lunch and then you go full service later on. That's absolutely possible. And then you just go checkbox down here. So you know, we're not going to select beers. We're not gonna sell ice cream because maybe we're not able to, to service it, or maybe we are. So I hit that, I hit save. You refresh the point of sale and it, it's now got that full menu. So very easy to set up and manage. Same exact process with the online ordering. But if you wanna go back to the slide deck. And anything else you wanted me to, to share on the online side or the discussion about that? Um, I think that was a, a good glimpse. Let's go ahead and, and jump into the Q&A now that we're in our, our final stretch for time. I wanna be mindful of folks' time. Um, so one of the first ones I think is an easy one for you, Dan, it's do you have a kiosk solution available for a convenience store setup? Sure, yeah, uh, there's, there's different options that are available to you, but uh, we can actually have a barcode scanner attached to the kiosk. You can add items that way. Uh, you can also have them go in and select their, their menu and offerings. You know, many of the convenience stores that I'm going into today, they've got kiosks that are sitting on their counter and they've got a full kitchen in there. And 
you know, very similar process. You, you put the order in and it can generate and um, you can have the customer pay right then and there. So, you know, quick service and convenience stores, they're, they're often getting into these blurred lines. There was also a question about cash payments at the kiosk versus at a separate station. Um, would there need to be a staff member there or how have clients addressed that in those situations? Yeah, typically the, the way we handle that is um, by having another terminal, if you wanna take that cash, that they can actually print out a receipt. You can scan that receipt and pay with cash in a typical cash or configuration. Uh, and then there's a question about, can I have an outdoor kiosk, uh, either drive through or outdoor stands? Yeah, it, it is an iPad, uh, so it is not, you know, ready to be exposed to all the elements. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that we have a drive through ready situation here for the kiosk. Uh, and depending on your, your climate, a covered patio might be necessary, uh, but, but up to you. And maybe if it's a Good weather day, you, you can bring them outside, but uh, no, it's not an outdoor ruggedized uh, kiosk. Yeah, you would still need a team member and probably a mobile order taker situation for something like that. Sure. Um, uh, great. Uh, let's see. Will this self service kiosk accept cash and cards as well as Apple Pay? Yeah, so it'll, it'll certainly, uh, I think we addressed the cash uh, portion already for cards and Apple Pay. Yeah, absolutely. So it's got the attached Ingenico payment device. That in Ingenico payment that device takes Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Google Pay, uh, you name it, tech firm pay. Uh, as long as your payment processors are going to support it, that payment device handles that uh, just like any other credit transaction. And uh, it's very easy to use. So Then we also have a question about the equipment that is required in order to utilize the XT solutions specifically? Uh, yeah, so it's it's the same equipment that, that we typically have. So it is an iPad, it is a stand, it's the payment device and a receipt printer if you need that. Um, and you know the, the general networking that's going to be set up uh, to support all that, but that, that's all that it requires. So it's a relatively low cost solution and you don't have to use a thousand dollar iPad Pro, you can use a standard iPad. It's a, a good size. If you walk into, you know, some of these sandwich chains that, that really drive kiosk very well, they've got 10 inch tablets and they're driving most of their orders through, through those. Awesome. And unfortunately we are at time, we're, we're still getting questions and, and they've been great. So um, for those who are on the line, um, please note that we'll be following up after this webinar with a recording so that you can come back and relive the magic that is Dan's demo over and over again. Um, but we will also do our best to make sure we follow up on any specific questions that we did not have time to address here on the call today. So thanks again to everyone for joining and for your time and attention. And we hope that you found some value in this and learned something new. Have a great day. Thanks, Sydney. Got it that time. <laughs>